So, so this is the conceptual questions. It's the first of the conceptual questions this semester. And as you see in the assignment the title, it says it's uh, peer graded. And uh, what that means is uh, there's an additional element to this assignment uh, beyond um, just a regular cam canvas assignment that you might have seen. You get assigned the peer reviews. So let me um, show you the assignment setting so that you can see uh, what this looks like. And I see the question in the chat. Yes, this is due today. And um, so with these, you have uh, two tasks to do. The one is the conceptual question itself. So, you know, if you're accessing this like a student, then you will have, um, you know, these views. In fact, let me submit something so that I can demonstrate some of the things as I'm talking about the peer review process. So I'm going to start assignment and then um, I don't want this. What I actually recommend is text entry. If I could make this come first, I would. So uh, let me just give a pretty um, bad answers. So let's see one, which balls are these. Okay. So how do speeds compare? Um, I'm going to get deliberately wrong answers. So I'll say uh, track B will be faster because of... Uh, steeper slope and then i'll say um uh b ball will reach the bottom first again this is wrong pretty bad answer also pretty a, a little bit too short um um but let me just uh, enter that as an example and uh, uh, and i'll just put in numbers two and three um, so I had a start assignment, text entry, I'm just submitting. Again, this is not a model answer. I'm just uh, going through the motion as test student. And this is do this uh, tonight. And um, uh, after you submit, you can actually, you have an unlimited attempt. You can submit more than once. Um, I think your peer reviewers will see your latest attempt only. Your instructors will be able to see all your attempts. Um, and so that's the first of the tasks, pretty normal, kind of common of Canvas assignments. And after you've done that, not quite midnight tonight, but um, a little bit after midnight. So let me go into the settings and show you. So this assignment is due tonight. It's due um, here, you know, midnight tonight for everyone. And there's a second element to it. At 8 a.m. tomorrow, peer reviews get assigned. Uh, you know, they are required. Um, <laughs> to the extent they <laughs> can be required. And the system will automatically assign peer reviews to everyone who have made a submission. So if you haven't made a submission, you won't get peer reviews, sorry. I think for this first assignment, I'll make an exception and um, go in and manually assign additional peer reviews, but that won't happen for any other assignment. And so for those of you who made a submission, you'll get three of your classmates' submissions assigned to you to pre peer review. And um, you should take a look at them. And I do have a, one additional assignment set up to assist you in that peer review process. So when you look at this uh, in the modules view, there's a, an assignment item called peer review kinematics. Um, the second part of the names will match to indicate that they are related. And this item will um, one, it'll contain some of the instructions for peer review, although it's uh, not quite, com it, it, there's a, it's difficult for me to make it complete because uh, uh, from the instructor side, we don't actually see the uh, peer review screens. So I'm going to be posting an extra credit discussion uh, Saturday morning so for, uh, for you to share it, share it with your classmates, how you access peer reviews. Um, so, but it'll at least have a reminder for peer review. And one, two, uh, it contains model answers. So when I go to this, you are going to see, so if I scroll down, you will see the model answers. So I won't really scroll down. <laughs> you will get to see this after you've submitted the conceptual questions. Um, but it is has instructions, you know, for peer review. The links to this uh, peer review assignments are available within the, the other thing, you know, the conceptual questions. Look for these links. And uh, I'll also make uh, uh, an extra credit discussion available for you if you are having trouble finding it so that um, your classmates can share how they found it. So um, in this peer review 
so I want to, so, you know, I want you to be upfront about this peer review mechanism so that as you are submitting your answers, you will know that, that your classmates will see it. And we used to make this uh, anonymous. And I saw some things that I really didn't like when the reviews are anonymous. So it's no longer anonymous. As you are reviewing, you will see your classmates' names and, um, and, and, um, and your classmates will see the reviewers' names. And uh, I really have two advice as you are doing the peer review. One is that, um, uh, so the grades you assign, they are not the real grades. That's uh, really the only way this uh, will work because, you know, FERPA, Federal uh, Educational Rights and something, um, Protection or Act. Um, FERPA has a privacy uh, rights. Uh, FERPA uh, describes uh, privacy rights that you have as a student in a higher education system. And uh, any educational record, which means like your graded work, we're not supposed to share it with other people. Your classmates can't see your graded work. But um, the peer reviews are allowed under FERPA because the comments that your peers leave you, one other peer grade won't, so won't be able to see it, and it's not educational record because it's not the real grade. I do think you benefit both from leaving comments to uh, your peers. It's a kind of educational process for you. And two, from seeing your peers' comments. I do think you benefit from that. That's why this whole thing is set up. But the the grades that you leave in this system is not the real grade. The real grade will be assigned by your instructors. And when I grade, I do look at peer reviews. Uh, sometimes when I see points marked down, they kind of uh, uh, flags for me. Oh, I need to pay closer attention. So I uh, might see that. So, uh, so I want to be upfront about that. That you're gonna, uh, your peers will see your work, <laughs> and uh, you know uh, when you leave comments and your. Um, and your the person you are grading will also see your names and all that, um, and so as you are doing that peer grading, um, so let me show in a speed grader screen with the test student thing that I just submitted uh, what it kind of looks like and what I hope people will do. So I'm gonna just navigate to the test student screen uh, off screen so that I don't accidentally show uh, someone else's work outside of the peer review setting. Let me just navigate to the test student submission, which again were terrible. Your submissions shouldn't look like that. So um, your view will look a little bit different from this instructor's view of the speed grader. But somewhere you should have access to a rubric that you can look at. And the rubrics will refer to basically compilation um, so your response is marked and demonstrates a good faith attempt effort at answering the question. And so it's uh, referring to completion and effort. So this answer, even though it's completely wrong and maybe even a little bit too short, because it, I, in my judgment, I think it at least shows some good faith effort at answering the question. So I would be marking two here. Uh, when the, the responses are blank or missing, it's easy, you know. Those really should be zeros. Um, so this is one portion of the peer grading. You look at the responses, you mark the rubrics. Now, if you want to leave individualized comment, you can do it here. Uh, you can say responses seem a little too short. Couldn't you say more? So you can leave it here. That's definitely one place where you can leave comments. You can also leave comments somewhere down here. Um, now, one thing that I will tell you is definitely required for the peer review is you have to uh, fill out the rubric and save it. Um, that's uh, really the only way I can track um, who have filled out the rubric and grade you on the peer review uh, assignment item itself. So please make sure that you fill out the rubric. And as you are filling out the rubric, so you know when you save, um, you will find that you can no longer edit it. <laughs> if somehow you saved something that you didn't mean to save, uh, reach out to reach out to me, and I can fix something so that you can edit it again. Um, um, but just to be aware that when you click save, it'll just uh, save it forever. It won't allow you to edit it after. So that's a, one part of the peer review. Fill out the rubric, leave some helpful comments. I think that process is um, good for you. 
Um, and uh, let's see. And as you are leaving that feedback, just to know that the people you are leaving feedback on, they will not be able to respond to you. So even though this looks like a question, I'm doing that fully realizing that test the student cannot actually reply back. It's uh, um, the peer review com communication direction goes only one way. Um, so that's the fill out the rubric and leave helpful comment and yeah and and uh, so on my graders uh, on, on my instructor screen you know I have this extra tab peer reviews and this is where so right now it won't show any peer reviews assigned and you know when I edit this video I'll blur out these names so that uh, you know that info directory information is um, protected for people who are not in the class so after uh, 8 a.m. tomorrow there will be actually three additional names for everyone who submitted, uh, made a submission here. Those are the peer reviews assigned. And on this screen, I can change who's assigned what. And uh, normally, I wouldn't do that. And there's this button that I click to uh, assign additional peer reviews for people who make late submissions. For most uh, conceptual questions, we won't be doing that. But for this one first one, I'll do that so that people can have at least one chance at doing peer review. Um, and and yeah, and it's on this screen where I can see who filled out the rubric. So let me see. Did I mention all the things I need to mention? Uh, so, you know, I don't know each semester. I don't know how big a problem it would be. There were semesters where it was a big problem. Then there are semesters where it's not. So it's the question of, you know, what kind of answer falls into the rating of one incomplete? Um, that the response doesn't show a good faith effort at answering the question. Um, so one of the ways in which someone might reach this criteria is basically by cheating. Um, so, you know, if someone's answer is obviously copy and pasted from ChatGPT, then yeah, they should be getting this uh, uh, rating. And, uh, you know, th that kind of action, cheating, is not some, you will never get an A or B in this class through cheating. So it's something that will never help you grade-wise. And I think the, the reason I'm mentioning it now and kind of putting on people's radar is, I uh, think of people who try to cheat, you just hurt yourself. Uh, one, so again, you're not going to get an A or B in this class through cheating. I have taken uh, uh, measures to prevent that pretty well. I liked how well it worked last semester, so it simply won't happen, one. And two, um, in that, uh, whatever effort you put into cheating, you um, denied yourself an, an opportunity at education. And that's something that's really hard to get back. So um, so let me just <laughs> leave that elephant in the room there. And I think that's uh, everything I had to say about uh, conceptual questions and peer grading. Oh, and uh, these are supposed to be you know conceptual questions. You should be able to answer this after having read the book. If you are finding yourself doing a lot of calculations for this, that probably means you're not answering it the way it's meant to. And uh, this is where the, the peer grading assignment item helps, you know. After you put in the effort and you are kind of saying, okay, did I put in too much effort? On this assignment item, you can see the model answer. Again, I won't scroll down, but you can look at the model answer and see what um, I put forward as a kind of uh, answer that a student could give, usually without doing a lot or even any calculation. Um, oh, I remember something that I forgot to do. So speaking of um, cheating on conceptual questions, which I find to be crazy because again, it won't um, it won't actually help you with anything. But um, so last all last semester, I was actually cheating myself using ChatGPT. I wanted to see how good uh, GPT was answering these conceptual questions, and you know it is pretty good and. Um, so a matter of are you using that tool to cheat or um, or you know help you learn and um, so I, this semester I don't know if I'm gonna keep doing that so I do have a paid account with the perplexity that I've been using and it, it, you know it's actually pretty good like if I put in uh, this question uh, you know I don't remember if it was I think it was actually answering incorrectly last semester so let me see if it answers correctly this time. Maybe it won't, um, but so I'm not gonna do this thing. Speeds will be the same. Yeah, okay. 
uh, and the well, wow. So if we got it wrong last time, it definitely got it right this time. So uh, although I think its explanation is probably a little bit iffy because you know slope A is a steeper. It's not. You know B is a steeper here. Um, but I think I actually talked about the last time. So the um, the videos of when I was doing this last semester, I'm not linking it from the course because I don't know how relevant it would be on a permanent basis. But if you're somehow interested, this is what you can do. We have a YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com, see COA Physics. It's our YouTube channel. <laughs> if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, we do have a playlist that's a physics for conceptual questions. It's publicly available. Uh, you know, there are stuff that won't interest you. Just scroll down to physics 4A, conceptual questions with the GPT-4, that's with the perplexity. So kinematics, this is the version that I did and... it. Um, I did the last semester. So, um, you know, so this semester I won't spend another, uh, what is it, another 14 minutes redoing this because I don't think it had changed a lot. But hey, if you're interested, there's that video. Um, again, don't use this to cheat. <laughs> if we are somehow using it to learn physics, then great. Don't use it to cheat.